Hello everyone. Today we will discuss the problems which were asked under extractive metallurgy. The first question is: Arrange the following in correct sequence of operations in an integrated steel plant. First one is basic oxygen furnace. Second one is blast furnace. Third one is RS degassing process. Fourth one is ladle furnace. So we have to arrange in increasing order or correct sequence of operation, basically. So we know in a steel plant, first step is iron making, then steel making. Okay, then in the steel making only uh, cleaning, cleaning of steel takes place. So if you see, the first one is basic oxygen furnace. Basic oxygen furnace is LD converter. So LD is used in steel making. So let it be a point. Then the blast furnace. Blast furnace is a furnace where we produce iron, that is pig iron. So blast furnace will come to the left. Okay. LD that is POF. So let it be here. Then RH degassing process. Then ladle furnace. And uh, we know that after uh, LD converter, the steel is sent to ladle furnace for uh, desulfurization or uh, some kind of uh, alloy addition. So this type of these type of steps are followed so after this ladle furnace to make it a very clean steel we use RS degassing process in which we uh, remove basically we make very uh, fine very fine quality steel <coughs> so the correct sequence will be First will be blast furnace, okay. Then BUF, okay. Then ladle furnace, then RH. So correct option will be option D. Now coming to second question, what is the most abundant anion in 2CO SiO2? So in 2CO SiO2, you have to just remember it that in 2CO SiO2. SiO4 4 minus anions are present. If you increase the calcium content, the 3 CO dot 2 SiO2 like that, then this type of anion is presented more amount. Okay, so there is a chart regarding this. So you can find in a book also. So here the correct answer will be SiO4 4 minus. Now, third question. In froth flotation, the primary purpose of adding collector is to what is the purpose of adding collector? So first you, you need to know about the collector. Okay, so first let us check the options. Make the surface of the mineral hydrophobic. Yes. Make the surface of the mineral hydrophilic. No. Because suppose it suppose it will make the surface hydrophilic, then it will dissolve with water, and there will be no bubble for uh, there will be no sticking of the mineral to the bubble, and hence removal of mineral will not take place. Stabilize the froth. Stabilization of the froth is done using pine oil. So this is also not correct. Adjust the pH pH is adjusted with the help of lime. So this is also not correct. So correct option will be make the surface of the mineral hydrophobic. And this is what the collector uh, has got the property. So collector actually what happens? Collector is basically genthate. So it it covers the mineral particle, it is a mineral particle, it covers the mineral particle and forms a surface and this surface 
is formed such as it is hydrophobic so it is not attracted to water this is not attracted to water that's why it get sticks uh, to the bubble so when it sticks to the bubble and when this bubbles rises so it carries the mineral also and we get the mineral particles on the top side and we get the mineral next question is to minimize refractive loss during b of steel making slag is super saturated with which of the following so during b of process the lining of b of that is ld converter is lined with mgo that is dolomite and if you see the slag slag mainly contains SiO2 and CO so there is a huge tendency for this SiO2 to react with MgO because SiO2 is acidic and MgO is basic okay so there will be chances that a reaction will take place and it will ultimately corrode or it will degrade degraded the surface so so if you super saturate with mgo then this reaction tendency will decrease but if we add some other element like fu2o3 al2o3 and sio2 then it is not going to serve the purpose because basically MGO is involved in this reaction so correct answer will be MGO okay now this question Fe is produced in a reactor using pure Fe2O3 carbon and oxygen for every mole of iron produced 2.38 mole of carbon is used the exit gas from the reactor contains CO and CO2 in the molar ratio of 1 ratio 1 how many moles of O2 is consumed for every mole of Fe produced? So here <clears throat> it is given that we are getting one mole of iron. That's it. We have got Fe2O3. We have got carbon and oxygen. We have got three uh, parts. You know, three three raw material you can say. And we are getting one mole of Fe and we are getting CO and CO2 in equal volume okay now <clears throat> since the carbon the carbon used is about 2.38 uh, mole and this carbon will undergo two reaction that is first one it will produce co2 and second one it will produce co okay now let us balance this equation first okay now here it is given that the amount of co2 and co is equal so both have same mole so let us assume that initially x mole of carbon you know reacts with x mole of oxygen to give x mole of co2 now in the first reaction since x mole has reacted so the total left carbon will be 2.38 minus x it is clear so this 2.38 minus x will react with 2.38 minus x divided by 2 mole of o2 to give 2.38 minus x mole of co and from the question that x equal to 2.38 minus x these two are equal co2 and uh, co so from here x equal to 1.19 okay now you can see here the total amount of oxygen which is combined is total amount of oxygen total mole of oxygen is basically x plus 2.38 minus x by 2 
okay are you getting it now x is 1.19 plus 2.38 minus 1.19 by 2 that is um, that will be uh, basically 3 by 2 into 1.19 okay now this this o2 this mole of o2 is the total mole total mole of oxygen which is coming and this oxygen we are getting not only from just air but we are getting also from this fe2o3 so we need to subtract the amount of oxygen which we are getting from fe2o3 so let us see here that if you break fe2o3 then it will give 2 mole of fe and 3 mole of oxygen and oxygen will be nascent oxygen so 1 mole of Fe2O3 gives 2 mole of iron and 3 mole of oxygen and here it is given that we are getting 1 mole of <coughs> iron. So for 1 mole of iron half mole of Fe2O3 will, will be required and, and hence 3 by 2 mole of oxygen will be given. So half mole of Fe2O3 will give 1 mole of iron and 3 by 2 mole of oxygen. So now this 3, 3 by 2 mole of oxygen is basically 3 by 2 moles of nascent oxygen and here the question has been asked regarding the molecular oxygen. So this 3 by 2 mole of oxygen will give 3 by 4 mole of O2. Okay. Are you clear? Okay. Let me uh, tell you. 2, 2 mole of nascent oxygen gives 1 mole of O2 and hence 3 by 2 mole of nascent oxygen will give O2 by 2 into 3 by 2 that is 3 by 4 mole of O2. So now you are clear. So we need to subtract this 3 by 4 mole. So, so answer will be 3 by 2 into 1.19 minus 3 by 4 and this will come around 1.035 okay and this is the correct answer now let us see the last question match the metal in group 1 with the appropriate extractive process in group 2 in group 1 it is given iron, nickel, aluminum and chromium. Group 2, metallothermal reduction, carbothermal reduction, matte smelting, fused salt, electrolysis. So we have to match it. So now, let us match it. We will start with fused salt electrolysis. We know fused salt electrolysis is used for the extraction of aluminum. Okay. As the melting point of alumina is very high and it is not possible economically to reduce it with uh, carbothermic, that's why fuel salt electrolysis is used. So we know about this process. And the second is matte smelting. Matte smelting is basically used for sulfide ore. Matte smelting is used in copper. And if you see uh, in the case of nickel, nickel has also got the sulfide. O and hence nickel will undergo matte smelting okay now iron iron we know that Fe2O3 is reduced with CO to give iron so CO is used basically it is a carbothermic reduction process and the left one is the chromium so chromium is reduce with the help of metallothermic reduction so if you see the options p2 q3 p2 p2 q3 r4 and s1 so this is the correct answer so thank you all